Hello there, welcome to this video. Guess what? Entrepreneurs experience betrayal trauma <laughs> in a big way. So I have betrayal trauma coach Erin Anderson here with me today to give you some pretty amazing tips. I'm so excited. They're so good. It's like, oh my gosh, I never thought of that before. So powerful. So if you think you're, you're experiencing imposter syndrome, just hold on to your hat because this is going to take the top off of all of that and help you unpack it in ways that you've never thought of before. So welcome, Erin. I'm so glad you're here. What do you have for us today? Do you want to introduce yourself a little bit and just tell yeah. you where you're coming from? Yeah, thank you, Bronwyn. I appreciate being on and uh, chatting with you and everyone else. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, you know, I'm a Barry Trail Trauma Coach. And the reason being is simply because, you know, I've definitely experienced a lot of betrayal trauma in my life. And, you know, who hasn't? Mm -hmm. Right. But one of the things that makes my story so incredibly powerful is the simple fact that um, it got between <laughs> three options for me, actually. It was divorce, my husband, leave my family behind and never talk to them again. Right. And I'm talking like my extended family too, like my mom, my dad, grandma, grandpa, like everybody. Right. It was um, stay in the relationships the way they were mm -hmm. and stay in the pain or take my own life. Mm -hmm. Right. So I had a lot of pain that was causing me to think these things and I didn't see any way out of it mm -hmm. until, you know, God oh he's so good mm -hmm. <laughs> was like you know there's a better way <laughs> mm -hmm. there's another option here and that was to heal and so you know a lot of people think that they have to wait until people stop treating them that way or they stop they have to cut off all relationships with the, with these toxic people before they can finally heal and that's not true mm -hmm. you know and it wasn't until I started organizing the relationship I had with myself, God's way, that I started to heal. And because I started to heal, I also started to change from the inside out. And that does affect your relationships. And when I realized that and I didn't have like therapy doing that, I didn't like it was all 100% God that took me out of that dark, dark space. <laughs> then he's like okay now that you're healed go teach it and i was like me <laughs> are you sure like i'm this podunk kid from emory county right like i grew up in emory county have you seen emory county like nothing grows there like your face <laughs> <laughs> are you sure <laughs> And that was, that's been a journey of 11 years and it's been amazing to see, to see the, the transformations and the changes that happen when, you know, I help people heal their trauma God's way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you have experienced being an entrepreneur mm -hmm. and you've experienced the, I think, intensified types of betrayal that can happen mm. in when you fully engage in this, you know, I'm a coach now and I'm an entrepreneur and we're taking this to the masses and I have something important to say. Mm -hmm. And what have you discovered as a result of that experience? Well, I'll tell you something. After I healed from, from like the betrayal trauma of my family, right? Mm -hmm. And I started entering into like the entrepreneur space. I realized I wasn't moving forward as fast as I would like to. I wasn't standing out as, as much as I would like to. I wasn't able to bring in the gen, like generating the income I wanted. Mm -hmm. And, um, it actually came down to the fear of being betrayed again. 
and this is not something I, I think people, especially in the entrepreneur space, like they're thinking about like creating and generating and, and receiving and, and giving and like all these things. They're not thinking the words, I'm afraid of being betrayed. No. Right. That's that's not in their language at all. Yeah. They think they have just imposter syndrome. Totally. They think like imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee like the, the thoughts that are coming to their mind is like, what if my audience doesn't like it? Right. Or what if they say something mean? Or, oh, yeah. What, what if, if they, they say share it? Oh, say something mean. Right. <laughs> or like make mean videos out of it. Right. <laughs> right yeah. or like or like what if my great aunt sally sees this and she realizes i'm going to be an, an influencer an entrepreneur like oh or or like um another big fear that i hear a lot is you know i'm not certified right i have no certifications i i don't have a therapy degree i don't i'm not licensed i'm not i'm not i'm not i'm not and so they don't think they can get out in there and do this guess what guys I have zero certifications. I've been close. I've come close to going out and getting certified. Like I, Tara, she was shocked yeah. <laughs> when I told her I don't have any Tara, certifications. Yeah. Tara, just so you know what we're talking about, Tara is my business partner and she runs yes. our life coach certification program. And yes. she takes people through up to two years as we work with people for up to two years to help them get really, really, really good at not messing people up and, and actually being really excellent at, yes. at life coaching, right? But there's also this part of this where God certifies you. Yes. And that's 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 where I'm at. If I'm going to say if, I, I've, if I've been certified by anybody, it's him. And I've come close to actually going in and getting certifications from different places. And he's always pulled me back. And he's like, no, I want you all to myself. Mm -hmm. Right. And which has been really funny. <laughs> so I don't have any certifications whatsoever. But yet when I have my clients come to me, I make massive, massive shifts and massive, massive changes. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is if I can do that without like certifications and all of these other things happening, and I'm not saying like, don't go out and get certified by Bronwyn or Tara or, you know, come chat with me. There's I've got a certification promise. Yes, yeah. there is. <laughs> there is. There absolutely is. But I don't want you guys to think that that's something you have to do because the truth of the matter is, is if those are things that you guys are saying, that is a fear of being betrayed. A major fear of being betrayed. Yeah. I also want to insert here too, your reason for going and getting a certification is to level up your skills, mm -hmm. to sharpen your tools, not to say, okay, now I'm worthy of helping mm -hmm. somebody with their thing. So yeah, this is, like, yes. this is so important. Yes. And that's like, you hit the nail right on the head, right? Go level up your skills. Yes. But worthiness, like a certification isn't going to hand worthiness. Nope. You You're know? Already worthy. Already. <laughs> and once you, once you like realize that, like, oh my gosh, right? Mm -hmm. And that is the basis for your success right there is mm -hmm. what you believe about your own personal worthiness. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's everything, right? That kind of and, diffuses the fear once you, you're like, wait, I am like, nothing can take away my worthiness. Nothing. Mm -mm. I'm a child of God. I'm always worthy mm -hmm. to experience this life in the best way and the most perfect way for me. Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. So I got to tell you, okay, I had, a, I had a conversation with a client this morning who happens to be an entrepreneur. She owns a seven figure business, right? And, um, but her self-worthiness is so in her face, right? Like it, it's, it's just something that she struggles. Like she, she knows that she's listening to lies and she's believing the lies, but she can't, she couldn't seem to convince herself of anything but the lie. Mm -hmm. Right. And so if that's the case, one thing that I want to really also share with you guys, if you're really struggling with that fear of betrayal and that wondering if you're worthy worthiness also means that you understand a very deep truth about yourself 
Okay. Truth always has a physical component to it. Every single time. You know, for example, truth is going to feel very different in your in your body than what a lie will. A lie always feels like you just ate an anvil whole Mm -hmm. and it's sitting in your stomach. Right. But truth makes you buzz. It makes you vibrate. It makes you go. Right. (laughs) It's a whole different thing. So truth always has a physical component to it. Mm -hmm. Right. You can sit there and say, like, this is a water bottle. That is true. That is a physical component. And if you understand God and you know God and you love God, that is one of your physical components because he brought you, he puts you here on this earth for a mission and a purpose. Mm-hmm. That's a physical component of truth, right? Mm-hmm. So I want you to think about like what is actually true and what you know is true. And then take into consideration what you're believing. Mm-hmm. Follow it back to your core follow it back to your foundational truths and if it doesn't match up it has to be a lie Mm -hmm. and i'll tell you guys like this is something that was like a major aha for her as i said think about god saying those exact words to you oh i have another one that you might love my friend just reached out to me a couple of days ago and she's like, I just watched this training and it was like, say everything that you say with, and that's just how I like it on the end. Ooh. <laughs> so if you start having yeah. that talk, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. Right. Um, I, 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 well, I want to come up with a positive one. Money falls at my feet, and that's just how I like it. Right? Right? I attract clients effortlessly and easily, and I make massive shifts for them. And that's just how I like it. Right? Yeah. That's truth. Right? Like, that is total truth. Mm-hmm. And now, once now, we... Like, <laughs> go ahead. Do go ahead. For the audience really quick. Say it. What's, the, like, what's that number one self-doubt statement you keep making? <laughs> Say it. And then put on the end. And that's just how I like it. You're right. And that's just how I like it. You feel in your body. (laughs) Right. And then if you want to amp that up one more, like, don't talk about, like, what you deserve. But talk about, and that's how God thinks of me. Ooh. Yeah. Right? That's (laughs) going to turn it on its head quick. You will move through it. (laughs) Mm Mm-hmm. You will change your language. Yes. And if that doesn't sound good, here's how you shift it. Truth and lies, they're exact opposites. So if you know that's a lie, it feels like a lie. What is the exact opposite of that statement? Mm -hmm. Exact opposite. When you say it, the actual truth, notice how it vibrates in your body. Yeah, you'll feel it, even if you can't believe it yet. Then go Mm -hmm. ahead and baby step yourself there, but... Yeah, like that. Just know where you're going, right? Mm-hmm. If you can't believe it, let's have a conversation. I'll get yeah. you. I'll convince you. <laughs> <laughs> if you want your six figures. <laughs> you <know>. Yes. Come <laughs> so, Yeah. So you have a couple of more tips for us. Mm-hmm. What's the next one? So number two is check out your space, right? Betrayal trauma is legitimately disorganization and it will show up in your physical space as chaos and clutter okay now again you guys betrayal trauma coach here of 11 years i just barely went through and did my whole house overhaul right because there were certain things that i wanted that weren't quite coming to me yet and one of the things i realized is i was saying i don't have time a lot right and i'm like okay so where's my time leak Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. it was totally my home i thought oh my poor kids guys like i'm totally not perfect but i thought it was my six children okay Mm -hmm. that were constantly making a big mess and it wasn't it was the fact that i actually had stuff for them to make a mess with Mm. so we're talking about 
thinking in a more minimalist kind of way. Mm -hmm. So that things yes. can be put away, so that things can be organized. Mm -hmm. Like what things do you not need to hold on to? This is so symbolic. It like, is. What things do you actually not need to hold on to? It is. Because mm -hmm. you know what? Let me tell you something. As I started de-junking, I started getting rid of stuff and I started cleaning and I started like making the space exactly what I wanted. Right. Mm -hmm. I actually noticed, I thought I'd get really, really excited, but actually it was really interesting. I noticed I felt empty and I was like, huh? Well, that's well, kind of curious. Baby. Yes. <laughs> like, right. Like there was that was empty space. Yeah. And I was like, well, what is that about? And as I got noticing, I realized that my clutter was actually a physical representation of me feeling like I needed to have chaos in order to be seen. Oh, wow. Now, let's talk about betrayal wow. trauma there, right? Mm -hmm. Once I acknowledged that and I was like, no, 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 no. We don't need that. We don't need the clutter. We don't need the chaos to be seen. I mean, you know this, right? The organization is actually a symbol of you being able to, to actually balance your time between your business and your family and not worry about all these other extra things, right? As I started doing my self-talk and realizing, oh, you know what? Actually, I'm creating what I'm really wanting. I'm creating what I'm excited about. All of a sudden that left. I started purging not only just my home, but also other beliefs that I had that were attached to the trauma and to that story and, and all those things, right? And all of a sudden, <laughs> now I'm excited again about like keeping my, my home organized, keeping it clean, keeping exactly the way I want to do it and making things easy. Now, this is the key here, okay? When I talk about organizing your home, you want what you want to come to you easily and effortlessly. Mm -hmm. If it's not, there's some chaos in front of it. There's some clutter in front of it, whether it be in your physical space or in your mind. Most likely it's both. Mm -hmm. Right? Things will come to you effortlessly and easily after you start to organize your thoughts, your time, and your space, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, that means you're going to have to take some time and get serious with that, Yeah. right? And yeah, and I just want to draw some attention to this. Like if you're like this, I want to go back to tip one and talk about how this is impacted by tip one, your fear of what people are going to say right and how people are going to use what you say um maybe against you that's a big fear how does that create this kind of clutter in your space just the fear of it mm -hmm. how does it do that what do you think it looks like for most people you know i think it really comes down to a time leak time you know leak. Yeah, as i as i have energy I don't have time. I don't have energy. You know, um, another one I hear a lot is I'm working on my business all the time and it's just not working. And as you know, they start like, yeah, right. Right. But they think they're working when they're actually just Facebook scrolling. Right. And they're actually not putting that time and effort in. So they're avoiding the tasks that they know they need to do. And you're, I'm sorry, guys, you're going to hear my kids in the background you're there. You're so real. I, I, I am. I, it, it is. It is what it is. I I work in a Harry Potter closet. I'm not even joking. My my office is underneath my stairs. I can touch each wall. So, <laughs> <laughs> and my kids are behind that door, right? So it's totally real. But it does come down to a time leak. Because you will avoid the tasks that need to be done and make all these excuses and convince yourself that so these crazy. excuses are true mm -hmm. and I'm too busy or I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. You know, um, an example 
of this, okay? Uh, I know I've, I've had a couple of uh, clients come to me and they're like, hey, I, I really need help with my trauma, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the things, and they're, they want to like build a business, they want to help coach, they want to do these things, right? Mm-hmm. But one of the things that is stopping them from standing out, right, is this trauma. Mm-hmm. Now, if you look at their, look behind them, their spaces are very, very disorganized, mm-hmm. which is really interesting. I've always noticed that. Mm-hmm. Okay. So their, their office space is very disorganized. One thing I hear consistently from these people is I don't have time because this person is showing up negative in, negatively in my life and it's mm-hmm. impacting me. Mhm. It won't my, let me. My husband won't let me. My kids mm-hmm. won't let me. Yeah. And I'm just too tired to deal with their stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But this is what I'm saying. This actually kind of gets us a little bit into that third piece that I was going to say. Mm-hmm. This is where we get to make some decisions. And those decisions are going to equal some boundaries. So when somebody is sitting there saying like they can't do something because they're afraid of how this person is going to act or how they're going to show up in their life. And so they have to like walk on eggshells around people, right? Yeah, the one I hear so often from really new people, but they, I call new people, people that are still making zero dollars, but usually mm-hmm. they've been at it for like, well, at it, okay, for like five years. Mm-hmm. And, and they're like, I'm like, you need to be posting like this. And they're like, I'm so afraid I'm going to annoy people. Mm-hmm. I'm like, mm. they're afraid that people are going to come at them. Mm-hmm. Right. And they're afraid or of that betraying them. Abandonment is a right. way of being betrayed. Right. Yeah. I mean, and it's real. So what do you say about this? It's going to happen. Oh, yeah. You can't control people. You're just never going to be able to. Uh-uh. It's going to happen. The people that you uh-huh. think you can trust the most, I've had this happen to me in business. My business best friends, seriously. The people that yep. I thought I could count on the most, the people that everybody else like wouldn't ever believe would, would be that way toward me are the ones that turned on me mm-hmm. when I stood in my integrity. Mm-hmm. When I stood in my power and I didn't like waffle. Mm-hmm. And as soon as I wasn't doing it the way they wanted me to, they, they totally badmouth me behind my back, right? There's no loyalty, mm-hmm. right? That feels so bad. It does. Yeah. So, and I'm not the only one who's experienced it. It's Mm-mm. kind of a normal thing in business because people mm-hmm. go in and out of feeling competitive and being scared that there's competition. And if you're doing well, then they must not be here. If the spotlight's on you too much, it's not on them or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Then, I mean, what do you say? To people who are experiencing something like that. Well, number one, uh, you know, I've been working in the betrayal trauma field, like I said, for 11 years. Okay. And (laughs) I will say without a doubt, the people that I have seen have the most betrayal trauma are entrepreneurs. For sure. Me too. Right? Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And they don't realize it. They really don't realize it because it's just not their, their mindset, but it is absolutely the truth. Mm-hmm. Again, they're afraid of being betrayed by their audience. They're afraid of being betrayed by their colleagues. They're afraid of being betrayed by, by their family, their friends, like their loved ones. They're afraid of being betrayed. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, that's just a number in the story. That that's 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 something... That you're going to have to deal with because here's the deal if you're stepping into the entrepreneur space that also means you're stepping into lasting massive growth Mm -hmm. right if you want to grow your business and if you want to grow your income and if you want to grow those dollars that means you're going to have to up level you're going to have to change you're going to have to grow (laughs) and that means that relationships are going to have to do one of, of two things they're going to have to up level and grow with you So when you get uncomfortable, they have to get uncomfortable Mm -hmm. or they snap and leave you. So if you think about it like this, you've seen like, you know, like a cup and it's got like strings attached to it. And then there's like, like something on the end of the string. Right. Mm -hmm. 
I want you to want you to imagine like you as this cup, right? This is you. And you've got a string attached to every single one of your relationships. What happens when you pick that cup up? It pulls on them. It pulls on them. What if happens if right? And if what happens if you move the cup? Same thing. Right? It doesn't matter. Right? Sometimes now what happens if you take one of those relationships or one of the things that's at the end of the string and you anchor it to something like a rock or cement or something really, really heavy, right? It's going to snap the string off of the cup, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I think we need to accept it. Yes. It just has to be okay. Yes. And you can accept it because guess what? That's opening up space for a new relationship that actually will move with you. On the same frequency with you. Yes. It's magic. Yes. Because you take a look at you and me, too. Like, you offer a certification program. I offer a certification program, too, right, with my uh, business coach and my uh, partner, Coach LeChadwick. But yet, here we are. We're collaborating. We're different. We do different things. Mm-hmm. There's no competition that does No. Exist. Yeah. No. And we totally love each other, right? Mm-hmm. We're able to be real with each other. We're able to help each other out still. Mm-hmm. And we're able to be in each other's spaces with respect and love for each other. Mm-hmm. When you allow for the loss, you also allow for the gain. Mm-hmm. And this is what a lot of entrepreneurs aren't understanding, especially when they're talking about I'm not getting enough money coming in. I'm not I'm not creating enough. I'm not doing enough. Uh, I'm not bringing in what I want, right? Mm-hmm. You have to allow for loss in order to allow for gain. It has to happen. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. This is why organizing your space works. You have to allow for loss in order to allow for gain. This is why You know, facing the fear and actually getting in and doing the work works. You have to allow for the loss in order to allow for the gain. Yeah. I want to bring this back to our family relationships. And then I'd love to hear your gold, your your thread of gold analogy. Mm. But everybody is, uh, you know, everybody is. My life has been such that when I had my lower frequency friends, the ones that abandoned me or you know they didn't just abandon me they bad they backbit me you know Mm. as if i had done something wrong because i was making them uncomfortable because i was growing and i wasn't going backwards and that's been happening for i don't know how many years of this journey probably the last seven years of my entrepreneurial journey i've run into that because when I finally just stepped in and just ran forward, some people were like, wait, 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 I, I, I can't do that with you. And so I'm bad. So I need to have a, a meltdown and think you're bad. I, right. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's their story. You're, yeah. you're, you're just making them face their story and they don't like it. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Uh, but I have noticed that it was those very people that were sowing seeds of discontent in my marriage and and what they would say to me would make my marriage harder and because of my mindset around it right and when i finally cut ties with everybody that so you know i don't even know if i have somebody in my life still that's like that anymore (laughs) i cut ties Mm -hmm. my marriage improved Mm -hmm. like massively Mm -hmm. i'm like oh wow because mm-hmm. I feel way more confident, and my husband likes that. Mm-hmm. Ah, magic. Go figure. Oh, stepping on eggshells. Right. Yeah. So if you're experiencing something like that, you know, consider. Yeah, totally. Better boundaries. <laughs> totally. Well, you know, I want to say something to this, okay? Because I love patterning my life and helping my clients pattern their lives after that of the Savior mm-hmm. and God, right? Because that's that's like ultimately the ultimate goal. Right. Mm -hmm. If God will give desires to the point that he allows a third of the host of heaven to leave. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
I'm going to say that again. He allows them to leave. He didn't beg him to stay. He didn't kick him out, actually. They chose to leave. We were all coming here anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And he does allow for people's desires. And then he also allows the universe to come in and give consequences. Mm-hmm. We can do the same thing. Okay? I have somebody dear to me, very dear to me, um, somebody I love <laughs> almost as much as I love my own life, who I had to do this with, okay, and still have to do this with, because they were showing up in a very, very toxic way, very toxic way, had beliefs about me that were <laughs> absolutely like... <laughs> Where did you get that? <laughs> like, like, how did you connect that? What? Right? Mm-hmm. Um, was uh, using incredibly horrible language to me. And anytime I would try to be honest with them and be like, hey, you know what? This is not okay. You can't do this. Right? You can't speak to me this way. It's, it's not okay. And I just would set boundaries with them. They chose out of the relationship. They chose to not speak to me. They chose to never talk to me again. Um, And this is an irreplaceable relationship, actually. Okay? Because I'm respectful of his desire and because I love him beyond measure, I lovingly and respectfully let him go. And the thing is, guys... Yeah, it hurt, and it still hurts to this day, right? But I, my joys are so much bigger than my pain. Mm-hmm. Let me say that because I realize this one thing. I still love this person deeply. That brings me joy. I'm proud of myself for standing in my truth. That brings me joy. I'm proud of myself for getting in and creating something amazing. That brings me joy. And so I'm constantly also putting daily drops of joy in my emotional bank account. And so when I have major withdrawals like this, and sometimes it's going to be a monthly withdrawal, okay? A monthly bill. Let's just think of it that way. My deposits are bigger than any withdrawal that I could possibly think of at the moment. Mm. Right? And it's okay when you think about these things and when you start living this life and you start living this way and thinking this way, it's okay when people want to move out of our space. And I'll tell you something. You'll know. Like, I got to tell you, you know you're going to do something right when somebody comes to you and attacks you. I'm not even joking. (laughs) <laughs> I, used to, I used to hate saying, well, that's the measure of my success, you know, <laughs> but right. there is something to be said for it. It's like, examine yourself. Yeah, but don't make the mistake I did and take it too far and say, you know, if they're, if they're feeling like that, it must be a reflection of how I'm being. It's not true. It's not true. Right. No. Actually, it's not true. <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, what if you thought about it this way? The adversary wants to stop you from fulfilling your mission and purpose. Therefore, he's going to throw the mobs at you. Mm-hmm. He they will. believe what they're saying. Yes. They believe it. And so you just got to love them and just be like, okay, yes. I'm not on my inner circle anymore. No. You're, you get to go, I'll hug you if I see you. I love you. Yeah. But you're not my, my people. Mm-mm. You and know? it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, I want my people. Yeah. It is tough. It is tough. But if you allow someone to silence you because they right. don't agree with you, then you stop being the messenger you were meant to be. It happens. It was, was this golden, beautiful thread? Right. I want to say one more thing. Okay. You get to choose what to believe you can choose what they say or you can choose the truth and you know yourself Mm -hmm. you know yourself 
You do. Yep, you do. Okay. Okay. So the vein of gold. Okay. Yes. And this is juicy, yummy, yummy yes. stuff. Okay. And I will say that this vein of gold puts all of these fears on its ear and literally puts them away. Okay. Because here's the deal. The vein of gold is you were put here for a mission and a purpose. God knows your mission and purpose intimately, probably better than you do. He's not going to send you here with a mission and a purpose that is very, very, very detailed and very, very, very important without everything you need to fulfill it. Okay? Wow. That's so real. Yes. Keep going. Okay? He's going to send you here with gifts. Okay? So what I'm talking about are spiritual gifts. Okay? Personally, my intuition is, like, out of this world. And I say that because I, and I, I know, it, it probably sounds a little, a little like, woo, okay, Aaron, let's just brag. But it's true. It's true. Like, my intuition is crazy powerful. The second thing is actually since I've learned to turn to God and let him be my my clarifier, my mentor, and my um, authenticator. I hear him clearly. Right? That's another one of my gifts. I hear him so clearly. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. I, being able to shift energy. This is another one of my gifts. He sent me with these things, plus many, many more gifts for a reason. Mm-hmm. Okay? I have a couple of clients who are building their businesses. One of them sees auras. Um, Another one of them can actually shift energy with her voice. Mm -hmm. Right? Amazing, amazing things. Mm -hmm. Okay? We were sent here with gifts. Mm -hmm. We were also sent here with talents. Mm -hmm. Okay? I have a talent for speaking. I have a talent for telling the truth. I have a talent for recognizing the truth, right? I have a talent for drawing. I have a talent for singing. I have a lot of these talents. I also have a talent for writing, right? Mm -hmm. Talents, gifts and talents. These will tell you amazing, amazing things about yourself and what you're meant to do here. But the third piece, and guys, I am buzzing with all kinds of excited, yummy energy right now. (laughs) The third piece to your mission and your purpose is your traumas. The message is in the mess. Yes. Had I not experienced betrayal at the hands of some of some of the people I love the most, Some of the people I want to serve more than anything. Some of the people I want to live just crazy, amazing lives. Had I not experienced this type of betrayal, had I not experienced the desire to die, (laughs) had I not experienced all this awful stuff, I would not have the message I have today. Right. I wouldn't either. Mm Mm-mm. Would any of us? Leave no. Leave a comment. Right? I think that you probably got out unscathed. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it you're see here's the thing. This is what I love. Okay, I I I think it's amazing. Like the person that came up with the human design program, like holy cow, that person was very inspired. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool stuff. I love it. Yes. I love it too. We're about to do an interview of me reading Aaron's Where the Sun Shines on You awesomeness. So you'll I'm excited for this. Know. Yes, very excited. Um, but, and I, oh, oh, and I was talking, I was also going to talk about like Carol Tuttle, right? Mm-hmm. I love her four energy types, right? Mm-hmm. I've got all four <laughs> in my family. It makes things very, oh, yes. yeah, it makes things interesting. <laughs> Let me tell you, especially when you have a one and a three right next to each other, it's like a holy tornado every single day. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, right, here's the deal. 
we love this stuff because we want to meet ourselves. That's why we love it. But let me tell you, if you want to meet yourself, it is with understanding your gifts and your talents and realizing that your gifts and your talents are what make you a chip off the old block. And I'm talking about they are the things that make you a child of God Mm -hmm. because he has those exact same gifts and talents. They connect you directly to him. But so does your traumas. And I've said it many times, had I not experienced what I experienced, I'd have no need to connect to him the way I did. And making. I want to say this for anybody who thinks, because I I know some of my followers and it's going to be in the comments. I'm going to head it off right now. I'm not saying you need to stay in trauma. No, (laughs) no, no. Not saying that at all. I'm saying watch your trauma. Mm -hmm. Be curious about it. Observe it. Because there's a message in it. There's a message of healing. Yes. Yes. You know, the most amazing financial coaches I know are the ones that have gone from absolute almost bankruptcy, possibly even bankruptcy, Mm -hmm. to multi-million dollars. Mm -hmm. That's a trauma thread. That's a thread of gold, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Uh, My business coach and you even, right? You know, yeah, you've gone through the financial. You've gone through what works in business, Mm -hmm. right? This is one of the reasons why people come to you. It's because that's your thread of gold, Mm -hmm. right? I know the things, yep. The most amazing um, weight loss coaches, they're the ones that have shed like lots of of poundage right and made major shifts but they also know what it's like to be very very unhealthy Mm -hmm. right there's your thread of gold that's all it's all trauma this is why i always tell people your ideal client is a past version of you that is why that is why Mm -hmm. if you're saying stuff like but i don't want to deal with people who have that I will tell you right now, you're still in your stuff. Yes. Do your healing. Yes. Yes. And if you're really, really ready, like I said, you know, let's have a chat. Because that's what we're here to do is we're help. We're here to also help you ignite your mission and your purpose. Right? Yeah. Let's tell people how they can get a little juicy goodness from you. So, yes. So let me tell you something. And this isn't something I was going to hit on it a little bit more, but I didn't get the chance because, you know, I'm all lit up and everything like that and going somewhere else. But um, I love to also teach people about their boundaries. Right. Because your boundaries. Are legitimately the organization of your energy. Okay. I like that. Yes. That is the organization of your energy. That is the organization of of your truth. And that is the organization of you as a person. Okay. So when you have really, really solid, solid boundaries and you're not ashamed of your boundaries. Okay. You can literally blow up this thread of gold that we've been talking about into six or seven figures. Let me tell you guys, the reason why Bronwyn and and Tara are both so amazing in their businesses is because they're highly boundaried, right? Tara is especially awesome at boundaries. Yes. So much. Yes. I'm like, you're going to be proud of me. (laughs) (laughs) Good job. Right? Yes. So it's like, good job. (laughs) (laughs) I love Tara. She's amazing. She's amazing. So, but that's the thing. People who are very, very boundaried are the ones that are bringing in those six and seven figures, mm-hmm. right? Another really good one. Um, I love Lark Dean Galley, right? Mm-hmm. Here's another person, favorite. I love Lark. Mm-hmm. She's very boundaried mm-hmm. and she brings in six or seven figures, oh, no, right? Oh, uh, yeah, right, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. So, okay, multi seven, mm-hmm. okay? Mm-hmm. My business coach. Right. She brings in seven figures. Mm-hmm. She's highly ba- she's highly boundaried. Mm-hmm. 
all of the people I know that are bringing in six or seven figures are highly, highly boundary because they have organized to themselves. Mm -hmm. So what I have for you is a clarifying and creating your boundaries process in PDF. This was created as I was sitting back and thinking to myself, like, what was my own boundary creation process, right? What were the questions I was asking myself? What was I doing? And honestly, what do I still do? Like, if I want to create some sort of a goal and I want some reality from this goal, then that means that there's also a boundary process mm -hmm. that happens in the interim, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Once we understand that, our realities, our visions, those things that we want act. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry. We, have boundaries on We're we do. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love my kids. But Hello, they, real. it is, it's so real. No, I, <laughs> we do. But this is where you start creating those six and seven figures is actually in your boundaries. And once you start creating boundaries with your relationships, boundaries within yourself, mm -hmm. this is where you start opening the doors to actually creating amazing, amazing things for yourself and for everyone else. Mm -hmm. So that is completely free. My boundary PDF. Nice. Okay, so say boundaries, please, in the comments. And Aaron will reach out to you and get you that link. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here. You're welcome. This has been so juicy. Now, I have something for you, too. If you don't already have this, I have a Streamline Your Sales Process checklist that includes now, I just gave a facelift. So if you have had this before, you can go get it again, and it's a little different. It includes your four offers that you need to have in place in the checklist to be ready to actually market. And in there, I'm talking about getting on stage, but this goes to any stage. It goes to a stage like this one right here. Any stage, if you don't have your stuff ready, then you don't show up as confidently. This is so important. So I made you a little checklist. I gave you exactly what to do just in a nutshell. You can go do it if you're smart. Lark, Lark Dean Galley, she like raved about it. She got this and she just went and did it. Okay. Love it. Yes. And there's also what I did to change it was I gave you instructions for how to go find out through human design, the part where the sun shines on you. How are you designed for the sun to shine on you? How are you designed to shine in this life? And for me, totally on point. I didn't, I'm like, I knew that about me, you know, but it's just so fun <laughs> to see yep. that. Right. So again, we're going to be, oh yeah. Say I want six figures in the comments and I will send you that checklist. So you can go and work on those things for yourself. But I'm about to do, we're about to end this interview and start another one. Where mm -hmm. I'm going to tell Erin her part of her, her human design where the sun is designed to shine on her. I'm excited. So, yeah, yes. so make sure you watch my feed so that you see that I'll be tagged in that one. So that, yeah, so you can watch that one too. All right, Erin. Thank you for coming. And Namaste. <laughs> <laughs> and and thanks everybody for loving on my kids too. Right? Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're very, they sound like they're having a lot of fun. Oh yeah. And, and like they're super active and I hear that three in there. I'm sure that's who I was hearing. Yeah, I have two yeah. threes. <laughs> and you have two threes. I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. We'll see you. Thanks. Bye, guys.